This footage is from March 2022. When we was at Bempton that first time, we didn't notice what you can see now until we got back and looked at the footage. This was one of the reasons we wanted to go back uh, to Bempton after checking over our footage uh, because we come across many other anomalies which uh, made us curious and thought, no, we need to get back there, we need to go and have a look round and have a proper investigation in this area. After reaching our destination in Flamborough, we unpacked, settled in and then decided to head over to Benton to have a look around the area. And this, which I thought was electric, has no electrics in it at all, because I was under the impression that the lights could have been coming from here but as you can see it's there's no electrics or nothing red here all it is is spanners off steel roping yeah. and a manual foot pump and then when you look behind you can see there's nothing there that can give off two red lights we're using a head torch with a red light on just to see what sort of reflections we would get by just standing there with this torch. My thinking at the time of watching the footage was that there could have been a red light within the white shed at the side. It could have been reflecting when flashing a couple of times in the building. But having a good look round that building and looking inside through the windows, we couldn't see anything that was red that could have reflected anything outside that building. And all the way along the edge. Perfect. We still haven't got a clue what the reflection of the red light could have been on that bike shed. All we can do is speculate what it might have been. All we know that evening when we was up there and we had our experience, the feelings we felt were uncomfortable. There were feelings that we'd never felt before. It was just strange that it seemed to happen at the same time as these lights showing themselves around that bike shed. We are now at the area where we picked up the shadow man walking across the uh, edge. Looking at the grass stalks here, yeah, I can understand we could have got shadow from that to make it look as though there was a shadow of somebody walking across there. But again, inconclusive not knowing what we saw that night, or should I say what we saw of the footage when we got back. We spent a few hours up there that evening having a loop round, trying to figure out what happened to us that night on Bebton Cliffs. For the rest of the evening, we walked around with our equipment ready just in case anything would happen. Here we are at the place where it all happened that evening. And uh, Lee's got his a new thermal camera. So he can pick up any heat sources around the area. Which he just picked one up now. Uh, which we won't be able to see. And, but now it's gone. So we're not sure what that was, it could have been deer, it could have been a... He says it was something about deer size. 
left is on record. Whatever it is, I've got it. Good. Oh, it's there, Mick. Uh, we can't see it here with us. But whatever Lee's... 180 metres away. Whatever Lee's capturing now, hopefully we'll be able to have a snip of, of it to look at on here. Before heading up to Speeton the next evening, we decided to have a walk round Thornick Bear, just to take in the scenery and have a good look round. Well, hello. You all right? Look what's behind me. Speaking church. Let's have a look inside. Oh. Gee, that's what we like, don't we? Feel welcome to switch on lights in order to view church. That's what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not often you can go to a church. Switch the light on, walk in. Not these days. I think it was actually before 1831. It was built. Just let you view this. Right, just in between then, Treesley, that's where the light's coming from on other, in you know, on the other side. I can't see anything Don't through there. Move. What is behind the... Yeah, you can see it. There's something there, isn't there? There's something popping round. It looks like there's something stood there. Yeah, that's right. Bottom corner on the left. Yeah. It's like somewhat dark. But now I see a light around there again. In a tree line in the distance, we uh, saw a light that was quite faded, uh, which was seemed to be showing up on the psionics as I was looking through it. But looking back at the footage, it doesn't seem to show anything. 
It was as though someone was walking around with a torch on that was giving a very faint glow. It only lasted for about a minute or so, but it was quite strange when we went over there that there was no one else around. Lee, what time is it? No, it is 4.58. 4.58 and here we are at Dane's Dyke. That's 4.58 a.m. On our last day, we went over to the villages of Hunnambeer, Staxton and Flixton to take a look around the areas mentioned in the Truth Proof books by Paul Sinclair. We also looked around the area of Star Car. As you can see, we stopped at a few locations en route to take a few photos and more footage. I couldn't resist taking footage of this old church, which I thought was quite pretty in the middle of nowhere. When in Humminbay, we came across this shield over the archway, 
but I wasn't sure if it represented a sword going through a wolf's head or a boar's head. Either is still very interesting. Seeing that it was our last night, we decided to head over to Day's Dyke and go over to a different area that we'd not been in before to investigate and also head over to the beach and have a look right there. At this point, it's as we were walking along, things started getting a little bit intense. It's, it's, I'm and we feeling started it's having a, a feeling as though we were being watched, uh, as though there was something moving around in the bushes. Along with that, we ended up uh, feeling sort of like goosebumps, um, all our hair standing on end. Uh, and it made us very aware to the point where we were stopping and looking around and filming within the bushes. It's easing again now. But I do feel dizzy and sick. Feel sick. You feel sick, Lee. It's easing, but I still feel a bit sickly. But it has eased that feeling. Nothing, I can't, it's uh, no, no, not feeling anything now. It's as though we walked into it, and it just came up. Were you looking? The car park, I think it is. Go no, on. that's 18C, that's the, yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the, yeah, that light. I noticed that when we're. There's another one on that side as well. The car park's over where you're facing now. 
we're walking back down to the sea here. Uh, but this way, I don't know which. It's tight on my head. Yeah. I don't know, what was it, relief or just tightness on your chest? It's like, uh, not an alarming tightness like I'm having a heart attack, it's just that on edge feeling where where my body is sort of like in two minds whether to release cortisone and adrenaline. Right, should we go on this uh, path here and walk down here towards the cat back that way? Yeah. Come over here. No, it's over here. It's this direction. Hmm. While walking back to the car park out of the blue, I felt something rushing into my left arm which knocked the EMF reader out of my hand. As it fell to the floor, the orange light came on as well as the sound the meter emits when something sets it off. Straight after this happened, I had the same feeling of pins and needles in my arm like you get when you bang your funny bone. If you could hear at this point, we start getting the feeling of goosebumps up and down our bodies again. I've got pins and needles on my feet, coming up to my body now, going worse. Is it coming again, isn't it? It's coming again. Very cautiously, we started to make our way back to the car park. Definitely. Yeah, I've Myself got, being I've on high alert and jumping at every everywhere. sound around us. We stood still at one point because we could hear owls communicating to one another as well as what sounded like an owl swooping past us in the bushes and making a funny hooting noise. Not admitting to the others, that night I was glad that we got in the car and left the place, and even happier when we got back to the caravan. After the weekend and on our way home, after all the excitement of the night before, we decided to call in at the Ruston Monolith. It is situated in the village of Rudston in the East Riding of Yorkshire and is the tallest megalith at over 25 feet in the United Kingdom.
you that again. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that would have been perfect if they hadn't been the old Jesus Christ on it. <laughs> I'm sorry.